Good morning and thank you for joining us on the Monday edition of TVC Breakfast. I am Veronica Dan Ikoi. Joining me this morning is Olamide Ariemi. Good morning, Veronica. Good morning. It's I was good about to... to say a happy new week, but it's been a long week for some of us. Absolutely. It's been a long week for every one of us. Even though we were not on set, but wherever we were, it mm. was a, a long week. Uh, even though we also had to come back here on Saturday for the Edo State Governorship election. election. Uh, but it's been an interesting one, an interesting development. Uh, uh, well, we must say... Uh, thank God it was concluded on Sunday yesterday, and that will form part of our conversation later on on the program. And also, we will be looking at uh, the matter of the possibility of robotics in Nigeria. We've seen other countries mm -hmm. making use of robots. Uh, how well are we ready you know, to adopt that into our system, and would Nigerians also want to work with robots <laughs> at the end of the day. These and other issues uh, will form part of our conversation this morning. But first, let's begin with this story where the president, Bola Tinubu, has directed security and law enforcement agencies to intensify efforts in cracking down on individuals involved in trafficking stolen vehicles. In a statement by the special advisor to the president on information and strategy by Ononuga, Nigeria will continue to work with its international partners to ensure that organized crime groups involved in transnational car thefts are deprived of the benefits of their activities. The president acknowledged the recent handover of 53 vehicles and uh, $180,300 by the EFCC to the Royal Canadian Mounted Police on behalf of two Canadian citizens who were victims of cyber crimes by Nigerian nationals. President Tinubu also directed all relevant agencies, particularly the anti-corruption agencies, to protect Nigeria's economic and financial integrity from organized crime infiltration. The president also said, quote, Nigeria is not a destination for stolen vehicles and a haven for illicit wealth from foreign countries. My administration remains committed to tackling money laundering, cybercrime, and other financial crimes. End of quote. Well, it's good to see the president talking tough with regards to the matter of transnational uh, vehicles being stolen, car thefts, and also the matter of cybercrime, which has become a major concern uh, for Nigerians and our image. We have seen uh, persons or organizations from other countries come into Nigeria as a result of they investigating mm -hmm. matters like this. In fact, I know of a documentary where um, one of those um, media organizations, international media organization, had to trace a particular car to Nigeria and details, information, everything was gotten. And it, it was just concerning that um, we are seeing these kinds of things happen and Nigerians are involved but are we tackling it from the root will be the major issue because if there are no markets for these kinds of activities with these persons get involved, who are their buyers? Who are the persons involved? Then I think that we'll have an, a, a holistic approach to tackling these kinds of issues. And talking about you know, a holistic approach to this, uh, beyond uh, well, the president also asking the EFCC to tackle this I think uh, it's most likely an holistic effort, like you mentioned. Uh, it also involves the custom service because these issues uh, are part of the concerns that have been raised around how our, porous borders, our borders. How porous our borders are, and you know, just apart from you know stolen vehicles, uh, we also have the incident of you know stolen phones, and that's why they say that before you buy anything, you must try your best to make investigations, you have to get a receipt, you have to find out before you purchase any item because it could be a stolen item. And let's not even, you know, uh, really focus on what the implication this will be on, you know, even the image of the nation, on even the individual, the victims, because I understand that um, uh, the Nigerian government had to return a particular sum mm -hmm. to the Canadian government. About $180,300. I'm, so, I'm just in, trying to imagine that, you know, the trauma that you will have on the victim in the immediate situation as soon as he or she lost or, uh, or, 
or did not have that vehicle at that time. A lot of implications that this will have. And so it's not just um, just the EFCC that has a role to play. Uh, sister more, agencies, yes, collaborative sister agencies efforts. Also, to it's addressing a collaborative this. effort. And let's also, you know, advise Nigerians to continue to put their best foot forward. Because taking advantage of uh, possibly our borders or some other issues uh, to, to, you know, partake in crimes, transnational crimes, you know, uh, beyond even stealing, we have human trafficking and other vices that we're also trying to address uh, across our borders. And so I believe that security agencies, like the president have said, will be on top of their game to address these issues. Mm. I like the fact that you brought in the matter of customs uh, because the, it's our borders. These people will, you know, carry these cars across. Mm. So um, what is what is the custom doing exactly to track this down? Of course, they have done a lot when it comes to issues like this. Some of them even get killed in the process because Persons involved in these kinds of activities are actually armed, heavily armed, and um, they do all they can to ensure that they bring in the shipping this kind of vehicles across the borders and will do anything to ensure that they get to the markets with uh, these stolen vehicles. But then more needs to be done with regards to equipping the customs to ensure that they are able to nab these people as quickly as possible. Uh, before they can infiltrate the markets with the stolen vehicles. And then we're also going to look at um, the AFCC collaboration. Um, how much of it are they doing with regards to this? Because I'm sure that is how they were able to get this kind of result. But at the root of the matter, what is encouraging these people to engage in these kinds of activities? Um, of course, one will say that not everybody is involved in crime. We are all feeling the pinch of the impact of the economy. So, but why is everybody not involved in crime? So, you decided to go on this path. Do not say it's the, uh, um, the, the, con the country that forced you on this track. But then, um, how is the country also ensuring that there is an enabling environment? for businesses and people to thrive uh, such that some persons will focus on their businesses, build on it as against uh, getting involved in issues like this. So we have to look at it uh, from every angle. What are the loopholes? What are we not doing exactly uh, that is giving people these kinds of ideas to perpetuate these kinds of acts. So it's critical that we begin to look at such areas, beam our searchlight on such areas, so that we can close the gaps that we are seeing, state governments doing what is necessary as well to addressing these issues as quickly as possible. Because these persons are people's children. Mm -hmm. they, they have families. And so uh, what are their families saying? So we'll bring in the aspect of morality and you know family involved as well. How are you speaking with? your family members who you know are part of uh, these kinds of criminal uh, rings. We have to leave the conversation here now. I'm